Hello my friends and welcome back to another Brotato Danger 5 random 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 run where we are jumping in for more genetically modified overkill to see what sort of horrible abomination we can get. Before I start I've actually fallen a little behind on thanking people so I just want to quickly say thank you to Mihao Defons for the 25 Zlotis, Lear Lequin for the 100 pesos, Caleb Stevenson for the $5, and Paul Bailey for becoming a channel member, as well as McDonough for staying a channel member for multiple months. So thank you so much, my friends. I really appreciate it when people, you know, take uh, the time to donate. It means a lot it, that people like my content that much, and I really appreciate that you've done so. So thank you so much. All right, let's just jump right into it and see what we get. Hit random and random again, and we've got the Loud and the Apprentice. So that's more enemies, we lose health every level, but gain damage, and there's way more enemies. Okay, so this is going to be really interesting. I think we're going to go with one of the, the coolest weapons on the Apprentice, the Plank, because the explosions are going to be very valuable for the Loud, since there's going to be so many enemies on the field, and we get all three damage types every level with the Apprentice, so we actually scale super well with the Plank, uh, with the apprentice. Normally this weapon scales very badly because you can only build <laughs> the, the loud apprentice face is also really funny. Um, normally this weapon scales very badly because you can only build one damage type at a time but uh, on apprentice you get all three damage types every time you level so that's pretty nice. And it's good attack pattern like it, it has a wide arc swing and it's um, Explosion will help clear the lots of enemies. Uh, we're going to just take HP because we lose that on the Apprentice. It's very important to take HP whenever you see it on the Apprentice. So just to quickly remind you what these characters do. Loud gets 30% damage, 50% more enemies, and we lose three harvesting at the end of every wave. The Apprentice gives gets you melee ranged elemental and engineering every level up, but you lose two HP. Now you get the one HP from leveling up, so this is effectively your HP goes down by one every level, um, is, is how that works out. I'm gonna grab the plank and lock the coupon and roll again. I really wanna get more planks. Uh, I like Scar on a lot of heroes, but it is somewhat dangerous on the apprentice because Increasing your XP, like I like Scar if you get it early, but increasing your XP gain on the Apprentice is actually dangerous because you remove your HP. I think I'm not going to lock it here just because it's expensive, um, but I'd probably buy it if it showed up again a little bit later on. Really hoping we can find more planks. Give me, show me plank. Alright, we have gotten very unlucky in terms of planks, but I will, I guess, get to lock one here are one short of being able to buy it. Very important to fill out our weapon tags, especially on Plank, because Plank has both elemental and explosive weapon tags, both of which really benefit from hitting six as soon as possible, because getting the flat damage is very good and getting the explosion size is incredibly important for explosive weapons. I don't know if we're going to be able to kill the tree here. Nice, got it. I gave up a little bit of money to do that, but I think it was worth it to get the tree. I'm going to grab the attack speed here, rather than rolling for HP or anything like that. Attack speed is really important on the plank, because it has good base damage on this character, but the attack speed is quite weak, typically, on planks, so we want to maximize that as soon as we can. And let's re-roll here and see if we can get something a little better than this. I wouldn't mind speed, but I think we can do better. Three engineering would be fine but I don't think it's that important for this build because we're building flat engineering anyways, so this is like one and a half damage for us. But our flat damage is already at um, three, four, and six, so our flat damage is already at seven, basically, or six and a half. We don't really need to add a little more flat damage. We're going to get tons of that. It's more important that we get luck and percent damage and stuff. Here I'm actually just going to take HP regeneration because we're going to need that. Though I could have also picked luck and been happy with that. Reroll, grab another plank, and then if I roll again, I won't be able to buy the plank. But I'm going to roll again for before buying one of these anyways. Um, because it's important that I actually roll into a plank while it's guaranteed, I think. 
So while I would have been able to buy the coupon, we're just going to spend out this money re-rolling and looking for a plank. On wave three, you are guaranteed to see two weapons in the shop, so we're much more likely to find a plank on ro rolling on wave three, and I really want to max out my weapon sets early. You can see here we really need some attack speed. That's the thing that we want the most of. Um, HP, of course, also very valuable. Since we are playing The Apprentice, we're going to have plenty of money because we're, we're playing the Loud, and Loud just gets lots of money thanks to the number of enemies on the field. I'll just take 6% speed just because it's a level 2 upgrade, and then we will grab a plank. Oh, whoops. I uh, cost myself a material there by not buying the coupon first. Definitely a, a small error. Not a huge problem, but an, an error, of course. Uh, gentle Alien and Cake we're going to buy. Take our free reroll. Take the tree, and then percent damage is very good, of course, because we're building tons of flat damage, so the head injury will be good for percent damage. Then I'm going to start hard rolling for HP on my level ups, I think. That is one reason to prioritize luck on the apprentice as well, so you can get the higher value level ups more consistently and get um, like the 9 HP level ups are where you really want to be getting a lot of your HP from, typically. The tier, the level 3 HP gains. Lots of... <laughs> There's so many enemies on the field. Can we kill this thing? No. I would have liked to kill that, but it spawned near the end. Um, I could take... Dodge or armor. I'm going to go with armor here. We could also reroll that, but getting a little armor, even though our HP is quite bad, will stop us from just getting one shot, and we'll take some regeneration here. I'm going to max out my planks here, and then we can buy these things, and then we're going to roll for HP, which we found. That broken mouth is awesome. Even though we are building regeneration, we definitely want to buy HP whenever we see it. And though we do lose an elemental damage, Lost Duck is very good, and leveling up our planks is very important as well. 17 HP on Apprentice on Wave 5 certainly isn't, you know, as good as it could be, but it's it could be a lot worse, too. Excuse me, 16 HP now. <laughs> All right, 250 materials from wave five, that's good. I'm just gonna take three HP. You should pretty much just always take HP when you see it, even if it's a low level HP buff on the apprentice. And we'll take luck here as well to increase the chance of getting higher level ones. And uh, combine, buy the plank, buy the lost duck and roll. Lost duck again, sure. You know, we, we lose a little flat damage, but the flat damage on our planks is super high already, so we don't really need to worry about that. Um, we also have one consumable heal, which we want a little bit more of, but that is a good way for us to heal, of course, especially because we're going to get to buy a shady potion here, buy a plank, and then we'll have quite high luck. So I'm really hoping that as we get some levels here, I can roll for the plus 9 HPs and mitigate the downsides of the Apprentice. Playing Apprentice without the primitive weapon tag is always hard, because... Um, hit. Primitive weapons is one of the best ways to mitigate the downsides of Apprentice by just getting a lot of free HP from the, the weapon tag. So, while we do great damage with this build, we're still in a lot of risk of just dying, and we're a melee build, so it's hard for us to avoid taking hits completely. That's why I need to really focus on making sure my HP doesn't dip so low that we get one shot. I know there's a tree over on the left, but there was there, I wasn't going to be able to reach it in time, at least not through all the enemies. I'm going to recycle the bat. Um, actually, I guess I'll take it. We don't really care about losing harvesting, and while we don't care about the lifesteal particularly, this is very good if we find fairy. I'm going to roll here, and even though 15 luck would be really nice... I think I'm going to roll for health. 
see if we can get that. Yeah, even 6 health is better than 15 luck for us right now, I think. Take the Shady Potion, increasing our luck, and then do I want armor at the cost of speed from the helmet? The armor really does not help that much, but we need all the defensive stats we can get, so I think I'm going to pick it up. Upgrade our planks, of course, and Lumberjack shirt, I think we can pass on. We're going to one-shot trees anyways. Definitely grab the spicy sauce, though. It's HP and it will scale... Um, Scale well with our explosion damage and explosion size and stuff. Even though our HP is going to be low, the just buying 3 HP for, for 60 there is still pretty good for us. And we'll buy any explosion damage that we find as we level as well. I'm not going to take Baby Gecko. We're not really going to leave materials around because we're a melee build. And increasing range on this character can actually be a downside sometimes because it does slow down the attacks of your planks. Although it's not as bad as because the planks have a swing animation rather than a thrust animation, um, the effect of range is lower on, on their attack speed. Because of angles... <laughs> Having to dodge the slashers here, I need to go back in and hit these slashers. There we go. Kill that one, and then we'll try to blow up this whole pile of enemies. Running low on enough... I don't have enough attack speed right now, but we're still doing okay. I'll take the mastery here. You know, planks do scale at half speed with melee damage. So even though that's not amazing, it's still good. And similarly, we'll take repost. We've got excellent melee damage, so even though we don't have dodge... Um, is still good, and yeah, we'll take charcoal for the same reason. I would have preferred basically anything else than just a bunch of flat damage from that shop, but that's fine. I think here, again, I'm going to roll for health, although the regeneration is tempting, so is the percent damage, but health is what we just need, so I'm just going to roll for the heart, and then here I could take the percent damage. I'm going to reroll this as well, and yeah, we'll just take another health. That's what I was hoping to find. Now we're at a much more solid value. Spicy sauce, sure. I'll take the metal detector, though the engineering is only one flat damage and we lose 5%. I think it's early enough that the metal detector doubling value will be worth it, and we'll take lemonade here. I might actually pass on the mouse, just because there's so many enemies on the field, and we don't use the lifesteal for anything. Then again, the explosions let us clear those enemies pretty well. Let's take the mouse. You know, I'm not here to not here to be a coward. And I, even though it costs us 3 HP, I'm still going to buy Leather Vest. It's just such a good item. You know, we came here to play. Let's not, let's not wuss out now. Took a bunch of hits there. Oh, and there. <laughs> you can see uh, the number of enemies on the field is starting to add up a little bit. And, you know, the lifesteal on this build is completely useless because it w every attack kills something. So it's not like we're doing a lot of attacks on the same enemy in a row or anything like that. Since we our flat damage is so wildly powerful. Trying to get in here where I can clear out this big crowd without taking too many hits. I also want to get that loot alien if we can. There we go. And I can do that relatively safely because it was going to drop a consumable. So even though I took a bunch of hits in order to get the loot alien, we got healing off the consumables. Ritual costs us one flat damage because we lose two engineering, but increases our percent damage, which is good. And I might actually take candle... It's two flat damage, one regeneration, which I do need, and this many enemies is starting to add up a lot. But again, we came here to play. Let's not wuss out. Let's reroll this. Unfortunately, the level four is useless to us. On the other hand, I'll just take this five regeneration. I think that's going to be getting us to the point where we can use it a little more effectively. Take the leather vest. I'm not going to buy duct tape here because we need the HP more than we need the armor. Another ritual, we could go up to 11% lifesteal, which is pretty useless to us. Um, 
I think I'm going to pass on all of these and see if we can get something a little more useful, like Cyclops Worm. Metal Detector, I think we're going to pass on, although we're going into Wave 9. Yeah, let's actually pick up the Metal Detector, because we're going to pick up a lot of materials in Wave 9. And I'll grab the Mushroom as well here. Not going to take Gummy Berserker, although I do want Attack Speed, and Range isn't terrible. Armor is still important to us, though. I think it's not worth locking. I might consider buying it, but not going to lock it. I think we can roll better stuff. That's a question I've had people ask uh, a fair amount, which is, how do I decide, like, you know, I would buy that next shop, but not this shop, because next shop is just going to cost more money. Um, and the, the answer is kind of experience. I mean, I know that's sort of a cop-out, but, like, next shop, it, it would... While locking it does save us money, it costs us a roll at a better item. So while I might buy it if it was our only way to improve our character at that point, I think we can get more efficient items next shop um, and not have to worry too much about trying to increase our character power specifically at this moment. Notice how, ma how much uh, materials we're getting from Wave 9. I was really looking to wave 9 to uh, solve our character's problem, so I'm hoping that we can roll something good here. Yeah, I'll take the power generator. We lose some damage right now, but we're going to be buying speed whenever we see it. And I'm actually going to take small magazine. You should often look at this item even on non-ranged characters, because 10% attack speed for minus 6% damage is often a valuable trade. And like here you can see our attack speed is 5% and our damage is 47 So. Like, we much would rather have the attack speed. I'm actually going to take dodge here. We can start to build dodge pretty well, and we have a repost already. And then here, I'm going to reroll. I think we can do better. Reroll again. Spent a lot on rerolls, but we had a lot of money this round, and I wanted to find an HP, so I did. Grab some regeneration. Grab some speed, which is also damage for us. Uh, book gives us one engineering for our weapons and also another unique if we roll fairy. I don't think that's worth buying, but if we had the fairy already, I probably would. And I'll lock this and buy another plank, buy a lemonade. We've already passed wave 9, so it's not worth buying XP items anymore. Just usually want to buy those before wave 9 if you're going to buy them. Buy the gentle alien, and I'm actually considering the wandering bot here. I think that this will help a lot, just given how many enemies there are on the field. So let's... This is not an item I normally like that much, but since there's so many enemies on the field, this could be helpful for keeping us alive. Weird Ghost, I am going to buy. We've got 10 regeneration, so as long as I don't take a hit immediately, we should be able to get out of the danger zone fairly quick. I think you should be more aggressive buying Weird Ghost than... You might think, just in general, it's going to pay off um, as long as you have some regen. And if you have like a garden or some other way to gain a consumable pretty quickly, in our case 60 luck, then the weird ghost will only be dangerous for the first like three seconds of the wave. You can heal back up out of the danger zone pretty quickly. Grab a beanie here, and I am going to take the snail. That just makes the enemies a little bit less likely to hit us, even though it costs us 3% damage. Probably shouldn't have re-rolled there, but that's okay. By this beanie. Our percent damage and our luck are pretty good. So do I want the baby elephant? I think I do, actually. That's a way to, to improve our clear speed. And we're going to pick up so many materials because there's so many enemies on the field. So what we're hoping to do is get a consumable before we take a damage here, and that way we won't won't die. So I had to, it cost me a little bit of money to buy the weird ghost, because I had to play pretty passive for the opening stages of this round. I'm also noticing this wandering bot is kind of screwing up my attacks, because it's slowing down enemies before they enter my range, making it a little harder for me to predict where they're going to be. I was trying to go up and grab this consumable, but we're we're back up to full health, basically. So I lost, I don't know, maybe like 10 materials, just not killing a couple of the early enemies. And I think it was worth it to buy a, a pretty efficient health item like Weird Ghost. We're actually able to, because of the, the Wandering Bot here, jump 
into these groups of enemies much more aggressively than I was expecting. I wanted to go in there because I saw there was a loot alien in the middle of that crowd. I need a... I think I do need a baby gecko, actually. I shouldn't have passed on that one. Look how much I left on the ground. Take the uh, goat skull here. It's just a little bit of extra damage. I don't want knockback. I do want attack speed. And... I guess I'll take the whetstone. I'd rather have 4 lifesteal than, th than 23 materials, I think. Um, I could roll for more HP or just take 9% dodge. I think I'm going to take the dodge here. We can actually get our dodge pretty high. And here I'm going to roll for health or something better. Let's just go with more dodge, actually. If I can get my dodge to 60, that will help a lot with our low... HP. Obviously, these uh, these skills scale together. These uh, attributes scale together. So normally, dodge gains value from HP, and HP gains value from dodge. You are less incentivized to build dodge on Apprentice than on other characters. But we've already gotten quite a lot of free dodge, so I'm feeling like it's it's a not bad investment for us. Very happy to take cake and community support. Given how many more enemies there are in the field, this is going to be an insane amount of attack speed. But because I did just reduce my armor, I'm going to grab the duct tape, even at the cost of some health. Um, and little muscly dude, one of the best items we could find here. We're at 54 HP, so I'm feeling pretty good. You know, it's not the highest health we could have, but... It certainly could be worse. I've been quite impressed with the Wandering Bot. It's not an item I usually value highly, but it's actually doing a lot for us here. Just because we're a melee character that has sort of weak attack speed, and there's so many enemies on the field. Ooh, two loot aliens spawn at once. That's pretty lucky. I think that's, that is affected by enemy spawns, um, the loot alien spawns. So you can, if you have plus 100% enemies, um, you gain more loot alien spawns when they do spawn sometimes. And that is obviously ludicrously powerful. Let's run in here and try to pick up some of these mats before the end of the round. Um, I don't want to leave as much on the ground as I did last time. More armor, definitely... Uh, yeah, we'll take this. Our crit chance is not high, but, you know, elemental damage deals damage, and crit chances is, is what it is. And similarly, I'll take the tentacle. We need some healing, I think. 13% speed is already pretty high. Now, I do want the percent damage from the speed. I think I'm going to take the legs here. Another baby elephant. Yeah, I'm going to take that. Reroll. Do I want another tentacle? I don't think it's worth buying tentacle. Um, I took it when it w only cost 20 materials, and but at the cost of 80, I just, just don't think it's worth it. I am going to take wings, even though we lose two elemental damage. The speed, 10% damage is going to be more th worth it than that. And we can repair our range a little bit, which will matter going into this elite fight. Although I'm immediately going to decrease it again. Recycling machine is still going to be worth pretty good money, I think. Roll past that. I will take the jetpack. 5 HP, though. But it's 10% dodge. I'm going to lock this, and I might not buy it. Just be, uh, if we find... If we don't find HP in our next round. Oh, I should also buy this plank. I probably have rolled past some planks, because I, I, my brain is so used to just glazing over those. Um... If we don't find HP in our next shop, I might not buy the jetpack, but I think I'm going to lock it here. Alright, so this boss you either want to kill immediately or not damage at all, because in this stage it's more dangerous because it starts moving fast and summoning tentacles, which eat a lot of damage. But because our damage is so high because we're Apprentice, we can just burst it down. As long as I don't end up taking too much damage. Yeah, I'm really regretting not picking up that um, that baby gecko that we saw really early, actually. Would have been a good way to be healing. Also, because I, I don't actually have a lot of healing outside of consumables, which is... I mean, consumables are an excellent way to heal when you have this many enemy spawns. Um, but I only have, like, 10 regen. 
one of the best ways for us to heal would be to find Cute Monkey, and Baby Gecko would set you up for that, because it pulls in materials, then Cute Monkey heals them, heals you with them. So that's a combo I should should have been on the lookout for, maybe. Two luck for every crit chance we have and lose two armor. I think we're just going to recycle this. While I do want luck, you, you know, ten luck here for minus two armor, that's just not worth it. Take another repost though, and... Two melee damage for minus one regeneration. I think our flat damage is high enough. I'm actually going to recycle the hedgehog and the mutation as well. I'm going to roll here looking for flat HP. Because that will let me buy jetpack more comfortably. And yep, we'll boost our speed for sure and get our dodge up to 40, which is nice. Finn, I would lose luck but get 10% speed and 10% damage. I think I will take that. Not going to take the Wisdom, because we need to be clearing enemies as they spawn. Blindfold will be great. And I'm going to take Alien Tongue, because we've, like I said, we've had issues picking up materials, and um, this also helps with our consumable healing. Will the Fertilizer pay for itself? So it's basically 8 times 7, so it won't... It'll just pay for itself at the cost of one melee damage. I guess that's not worth it. I'll take the schmoop, though, for sure. We lose two melee damage, but HP and regeneration are incredible. And again, I'm going to actually buy the small magazine. We haven't found a lot of good sources of attack speed, so I'm just going to buy any attack speed I see, basically. Power Fist. Hits for 174 and explodes. Yeah, let's buy the Power Fist. That seems fun. We'll buy the baby elephant and the defective steroids. This only scales with melee damage, but we've got plenty of that, and it's just cool. We are now very, very fast, so one of the things that I have to worry about now is being so fast that it's hard to dodge enemies. Which is a risk when you end up with these, like, super wealthy but low defense power generator builds. One of the downsides of playing the speedy and stuff like that. So I probably want to stop taking too much more speed, or I'm going to have a hard time dodging, unless I get a lot more defensive stats. You can see, we are fast. If only I'd gotten a bag. We're dropping so many crates because of our high luck and the absurd number of enemies on the field. Bag would have been worth, I don't know, 400 materials by now. <laughs> run through the middle of the arena there. Of course, the, the game sounds cannot keep up because there's just so many enemies on the field and we're exploding them. Dynamite, excellent. Just explosion damage, of course, very good. I'm going to reroll this. We're looking for health. Um, I would take the regeneration. I think I'm going to roll for health still, though. Attack speed. We have the community support, so our attack speed actually isn't as dire as I was saying. I'm gonna roll for health again, and one more time. Alright, we missed every time. I think it was worth spending 100 trying to get health there. Here, I'm just gonna take the three armor, though. Armor is nice, because now we are able to actually get to, like, our 10-ish armor pretty early. We'll take the this. Actually, just gonna buy the whole shop. When you have a build like this that just needs basically one thing, like, the only thing we need right now is health and some dodge. Um, it's worth spending that amount just rolling for it, I think. Uh, yeah, I'll take the insanity, get a little crit chance, and I'm not going to lock the small magazine. We would, again, probably buy it, but I think we can do better. This is going to be a rough wave, because we have hugely increased enemy spawns, and... Um, we also have a bunch of baby elephants, which are going to break the summoners across the map. And the slugs, when they despawn, they still summon. So you can't just avoid killing them, especially when you have like wildly increased enemy spawns like we do. Um, because when the slugs despawn, they're still going to put a bunch of summons on the field, and you're still going to end up with tons of projectiles in the air, as you can indeed see happening. I'm trying to clear out enough enemies that we can dodge a little better, but 
It's getting... Oh, this is getting a little risky. I need to go into the middle here where there's some consumables. Because our, our consumable healing is what's going to keep us alive. Four, three, two, one. Dodged. Got a lucky dodge there. Didn't make much money there, but we survived wave 14, which I was worried about. Let's uh, recycle the white flag, because I'm no coward. I'll take the lucky charm to get more consumable healing. Back up to 80 luck. That's good. Yeah, gentle alien. Still going to do it. Um, and then here, very happy to get this warrior helmet. 5 HP. We do lose 5% damage, but armor and HP are great. Grab the coffee as well. Now I'm going to buy the book, I think, because there's still a good chance that we find fairy, and that will help a lot. And it's just fairly cheap for us to invest in these, like, one-off items. Uh, lock the plank here to upgrade that. And then I could pick up another Wandering Bot. Maybe I'll try playing with two, because the first one has been impressing me. Less in, like, that last wave, because we were just trying to dodge projectiles, but... Um, it's honestly looked better than I thought it would. I'm gonna just, like, focus on... I'm not really focusing on dodging, I'm just focusing on preventing too many goobers from spawning. So I'm killing the summoners, then chasing down their little spawns just to try to prevent too many projectiles from getting on the map. Um, obviously, we want to still be farming and stuff, but the most important thing here is that we just prevent getting one shot, or getting 20 shot by just thousands of goobers spawning and filling the map with projectiles. Wave 15 isn't as bad as wave 14 because the, the summoners stop spawning halfway through, so you can see there's like no summoners on the map anymore. Um, that's why wave 14 is much more dangerous, in my opinion, because it will stack up huge amounts of summons. Whereas wave 15, it's much less likely for them to stack up like that. Panda, it, probably the single best item we could find. Luck is very important for us, and we need HP here. I'm going to take regeneration, because we are suffering a bit in the healing department, and still haven't found a fairy or anything like that. Let's... Upgrade, and I guess we're upgrading to a tier 4 plank here. Yeah, I'm going to buy the Wandering Bot. I just think that's fun. Clover will almost max out our dodge and give us 20 more luck, so we'll take that. And I'll throw in a reroll here to see if we can find anything else good. Um, I don't really want any of these things. I could take, like, the Glass Cannon, but damage is really not our issue right now. It's just survivability, so I'm just going to buy tanking stats only from now on, pretty much. The Apprentice has given us so much flat damage that I'm just really not worried about it. Yeah, slowing all these enemies, like the, the buffed enemies from the, the buffers here with the Wandering Bots, I'm honestly much more impressed with this item than I usually am. Just because of a, a, the particular circumstances of this run, I think, but it's always interesting when you get a weird character combination or just like a, a run that makes you think about the game in a different way. Or that like makes you reevaluate an item. You see, I can dive fairly safely into these big groups because we've got a good dodge bonus. And after you either take damage or dodge an enemy, you gain a few frames of invincibility. So if I dive into these big groups of enemies, I only will take one damage instance because we're so fast, we pass through the big group really quickly. And um, we're very likely to heal up any damage we do take because we're going to kill a ton of enemies and grab some consumables, all of which heal for six. So that gives us a lot of healing. Regeneration Potion is excellent. This helps solve our regeneration problems. And yeah, I'll take the sunglasses. That's a huge amount of bonus damage. We lose a little damage to take the Ugly Tooth, but it will help against bosses. Um, and given... Uh, the circumstances of my last video, I do want to help against want some help against the bosses. Here I'm going to reroll and see if we can get just health, I think. All right, I'll take regeneration. Five regeneration is too good to pass up. Speed at the cost of crit chance. I think we'll pass on the compass. I don't really want to go too much higher in speed because it just becomes impossible to dodge. I'll buy the plant, though. 27 regeneration starting to be pretty good. Grind's Magical Leaf will still be good. It just gives us HP, regeneration, lifesteal. So only, even though it's only going to trigger three times, it's still super valuable for us. Take the Muscly Dude and roll again. 
At this point, we can actually benefit quite a lot from Tentacle. We've got 26% crit chance, and the number of enemies we're killing is very high. I think Coupon will still pay for itself, too. Um, but I'm going to pass on the other two. So I think Tentacle will actually be pretty good healing. And healing is one of the few remaining weak spots for this build. Blank on Apprentice is just honestly really fun. Um, hard, but fun. This this combination makes it a little easier, I think, just because we have so much money from the, the Louds bonus. And start with, like, a little extra damage and stuff, too, but mostly just the extra money from the number of enemies on the field. So we can really afford to buy a lot of HP and stuff. I can't really see what's going on in the... Uh, in these big groups of enemies. Let me actually, I'm just gonna quickly, I may have done this before, I'm gonna turn down explosion opacity to like 70%, just to make this slightly easier to see through. Gives you a lot of options this game, so that's nice. Uh, we have 28 regeneration, but we're going into wave 18. I think it's too risky to buy the weird ghost. I would feel really dumb if I bought it and then just died immediately. Um, and I think we have it. We have an elite next wave. Yeah, I'm just gonna recycle it. Also gonna recycle the boiling water. We have so much flat damage. I just don't want to lose HP here. But I'll take six percent dodge. Then we can cap our dodge. Yeah, we are going into an elite wave. So I think it was right not to buy the weird ghost, even though maybe I could have gotten away with it. But in that case, I didn't want to be that brave. I'll take the range and attack speed. Our range could use some help, of course, and attack speed is good. Let me actually check the damage on this. So this did 19k. Uh, oh, weird. So these different items are doing wildly different damage. Like this plank did 22,000. And then this plank, the same level plank, did 7,000. That's really interesting. I wonder why that is. It must have just been like the direction I was moving and stuff. Uh, Garden is actually a pretty good healing item option for us, so I'm going to pick that up, and I'll take the Cyber Ball for more damage, and I'll take the Helmet as well, because Armor is one of the things we can gain quite a bit of benefit from at this point in terms of defensive stats. Since we're dodge capped and have like 80 HP, Armor and Dodge multiply together super well, and both multiply with HP, so the more we get of all of them, the better each stat of... The, the more you get of any of those stats, the better those stats get. Don't think we're going to have the same problem we did with the bosses, because we're just, like, two-shotting the elites. Working on dodging around all these enemies. Um... I could use, let's see, what would we want most? I guess just explosive shells is probably the best tier four for us. And plastic explosives. A nuclear launcher would still be great. One of the nice things about playing Apprentice on with planks and stuff is that you still just also get a ton of range damage. So if you find a rocket launcher or nuclear launcher or really just any good ranged weapon, you can always just um, transition into that. I'm not going to take Estes' couch. Uh, we would lose so much regeneration. Um, it's just a bad item. Unfortunately, we got unlucky there. I will take this boiling water when it's free, I think. And yeah, I'll take two armor at the cost of three HP. That's fine. Take the attack speed over the health here. Because now our HP is starting to really just be fine. I don't have to worry about it too much. Chain gun. All right. Well, we've got range damage and we've got engineering. So, yeah, we're we're chain gun now. Um, also, we got shackles, which is something that's really worth mentioning when you have these speed builds that are super high. Even if you're speed capped, you can go over the speed cap and still get the power generator benefit. So if we had like 100 out of 42 speed because we speed capped ourselves, we would still be getting 100 damage from speed um, on the power generator. It works on speedy too. So these item, this item is actually secretly really good with power generator and with 
um, speedy because you can prevent yourself from getting so fast that it's impossible to dodge while also continuing to get the benefit of those effects. I'm going to save 250 to make sure that we can afford the chain gun before we go into the next wave because that just seems super fun. This might end up... Chain Gun is, is insanely good, obviously, if you haven't had the pleasure of seeing it in action. We won't get to see it for long, because it's going to slaughter the bosses immediately, but it will be really fun to watch that happen. One thing I like about this game a lot is that the legendary weapons are actually quite rare, so it... Even though I have played more potato than anyone reasonably should, um, I still get excited when I see something like a chain gun. We will uh, take this, because now we're going to have tons of lifesteal too, because we've got the rapid attacking chain gun. I'll take the percent damage. I'm going to recycle this. Take 4% speed, so notice that we've got 42 speed, we buy this, and we go up to 80 damage, even though our speed is capped. So it's it's really worth uh, keeping that in mind, like knowing that interaction is very helpful. I'm going to take 4 armor here, I think that's going to be the best thing to keep us alive. And we will just combine these two, buy the chain gun, buy the crit chance, health regeneration, sure. Um, upgraded plank, health regeneration, why not? Oh, I guess I shouldn't be buying that because now I have the chain gun lifesteal. Oh, well. Robot arm would have been kind of fun too, but I'll just take the leather vest. That will increase our, our survivability. Not that that matters, but let's go into the next round. And we will... Uh, it'll be fun to watch the chain gun in action. So let's do this. See, it just wipes the floor with bosses. You do have a long cooldown between the attacks. Ended with minus 34 materials in the bank, so that's pretty fun. Let's look at our uh, damage, too. 4,000 damage, 2,000, 3,000, 3,000. 43,000 damage on the chain gun. <laughs> and then 3,500 on the plank. So this is why this weapon is uh, so good. <laughs> because it did 43,000 damage when everything else was doing like a 15th of that. All right, my friends, I hope that you've enjoyed this run. This was a blast to play this combo. Honestly, this is like one of the most fun combos I've I've found so far. Not super challenging, although we did have some tense moments, wave 14 especially, and just the amount, sheer amount of damage we got at the end really made this uh, incredibly fun. Anyways, I hope that you've enjoyed the video, and as always, if you have, do please, of course, feel free to leave a comment and like the video. Both of those things help a ton with the algorithm, and I really appreciate everyone who takes the time to do that. And you can subscribe to my channel for more Brotato and other strategy game videos, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers, folks. GG.